Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have the exact same problem and we're trying to find the total impedance but this time instead of using the what we call the real and imaginary parts of each of the impedances we're going to find the magnitude and the phase angle of each of the impedances and then use those to find the total impedance. So again we have a capacitor here, we have two parallel branches Notice we're going to first find the impedance across the capacitor, then the impedance across the two branches. Of course, since there's only two, we're going to use the product over the sum rule, and then we're going to add the two together. So first, the impedance across the capacitor. That will be equal to the magnitude of the impedance and the phase angle. And so in the case of having just a single capacitor there, the magnitude of the impedance is going to be equal to the capacitive reactance and the phase angle and in this case the capacitive reactance we already found that so you can see that's equal to 1 over omega c now we got to be careful we're using this capacitor right there so in this case that would be z of the capacitor and we find that by taking 1 over omega times c1 which is equal to 1 over the omega that's the angle of frequency is 100 and c1 is 2 millifarads 0.002 which is equal to 1 over that would be 0.2 which is equal to 5 so the capacitive reactance or the impedance across a capacitor the magnitude of that is equal to 5 and the phase angle is going to be minus 90 degrees because the voltage across capacitor lags the current by 90 degrees and the phase angle for the voltage is the same as the phase angle for the impedance so we use a minus 90 degree angle for that now we need to find the impedance of the parallel branches that's equal to z1 times z2 divided by z1 plus z2 which is equal to z1 first of all we need to find the amplitude of z1 so here we're going to work that out on the side so the magnitude of z1 is equal to the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared which would be x squared whatever the reactance is of that so in this case for z1 the real part is 6 that would be the square root of 36 6 squared maybe matter of fact I'll just go ahead and write it as 6 squared 6 squared plus x so we have a 1 millifarad capacitor, we have a omega, the angle of frequency of 100 radians, so we already have worked that out over here. So 1 over omega c is equal to 10, so it would be 10 squared, so it would be equal to the square root of 136. Where's my calculator here? I left it on the, on the board. All right, 136, take the square root, that would be 11.66. 11.66 and the phase angle phi1 that would be equal to the inverse tangent of x over c and x of course uh, that would be a minus x let's see what do we have for x <clears throat> that would be a, a minus 10 minus 10 over Ooh, not c my that would be x over r i'm sorry about that so that would be the inverse tangent of the of the reactants over the resistance. The resistance of first branch is 6, so it would be the arc tangent of minus 10 over 6. 10 divided by 6, make that a minus. The inverse tangent of that would be a minus 59.04 degrees. You see the minus 59 degrees. Close enough. All right. So now for the first impedance of the first branch, we have the magnitude and we have the phase angle. So this becomes equal to a magnitude of 11.66 and a phase angle of minus 59 degrees. Now we multiply that times the impedance of the second branch. We do the exact same thing for the second branch. The amplitude, Z2, is equal to the square root of R squared plus X squared, which is equal to the square root of, on the second branch, we have a resistance of 10 ohms, that's 10 squared, plus the reactance of the inductor which we have over here omega times l that's 100 times 0.2 which is 20 that would be 20 squared that would be the square root of 500 in this case so we take 500 take the square root which is 22.36 which is 22.36 
Now we need to find room somewhere to find the phase angle of that. Let's do that over here. Phase angle 2 is equal to the inverse tangent of x over c. In this case, we have a positive x, so that's the inverse tangent of the positive 20 divided, oh, I keep saying c, that should be r, divided by r, which is 10, so the arctangent of a positive 2. 2, take the arctangent, we get 63.43 degrees. How about just simply 63.4 degrees? That's a positive angle, so we have a magnitude of 22.36 and a phase angle of 63.4 degrees. We divide that by the sum of these two. Now, before we turn those into hmm, turn those into that format, what I want to do is simply add the two together. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have Z1 is equal to, we have the real part, which is 6, and the imaginary part right here. The imaginary part, where is my imaginary part? Right here, Z1 imaginary part is 10, so it would be minus J10. And for Z2, I have a real part, which is 10, and the imaginary part, which would be right here, would be plus 20, plus J20. So because it's a lot easier to add the impedances when they're in this format than when they're in this format. So I'm going to add those two together first. So for Z1, I end up with 6 minus J10. And I'm going to add that to 10 plus J20. So in this case, you're better off first adding them together before you convert those into the correct format. So this would be equal to, in the numerator, we have 11.66 with a phase angle of minus 59 degrees. Multiply times 22.36 with a phase angle of 63.4 degrees. In the denominator, we end up with 16 minus, oop, not minus, but plus J10. Now we're going to convert this into this format as well. So this is going to be equal to 11.66 with a phase angle of minus 59 degrees. Multiply times 22.36 with a phase angle of 63.4 degrees. And the whole thing divided by, again, the magnitude will be equal to 16 squared plus 10 squared that would be 256 plus 100 take the square root of that it gives us 18.87 18.87 for the amplitude and the phase angle is going to be well it's going to be positive phase angle it's going to be the x component divided by the r component so 10 divided by 16 inverse tangent 32 degrees Okay, so once we have the numerator and the denominator in terms of the magnitudes of the impedance and the phase angles of the impedance, now we can simply multiply, divide the amplitudes and add the phase angles. So in this case, that is going to be equal to 11.66 multiplied times 22.36 and divided by 18.87 and with a phase angle of minus 59 degrees plus 63.4 degrees and then minus 32 degrees because if it's a denominator we have to subtract. And so this becomes equal to 11.66 times 22.36 divided by 18.87 and that gives us 13.82 for the amplitude, 13.82, and the phase angle. Okay, phase angle, so we have 59, make that minus, minus 32, and plus 63.4, that gives us the phase angle of minus 27.6, minus 27.6 degrees. Okay, finally, we now have this, and we now have this. Now we have to add them together. So Z total is equal to, we have 5 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, and we add to that 13.82 with a phase angle of minus 27.6 degrees. 
So, what do we need to do when we want to add those together? We need to convert those back to the real and imaginary parts. So in this case, this is equal to the real part here, since the phase angle is 90 degrees, the cosine of 90 is 0, we get 0, and that gives us uh, plus, five, plus j times 5. I should write the j first, j times 5, because it's a positive 90 degrees. Oh, positive 90? No, no, that's a negative 90 degrees. Oh, sorry about that. So this becomes minus j5, because it's a capacitor, so we have a lagging angle there. Okay, we're going to add to that. Here we have the magnitude that would be 13.82 times the cosine of 27.6 degrees. That gives us 12.25. And then minus j times, we take the sine of that, 27.6, take the sine of that, whoop, let's do it again, 27.6, take the sine and multiply it times 13.82, and we get minus 6.40. And then all we have to do is simply add those together. So this becomes equal to 12.25 for the real part, and then minus 11.40 with a j in front for the imaginary part. And this then becomes the total impedance of that circuit, which, if I remember right, is the exact same result as we got on the previous video. Now, it's up to you to determine which of these two methods you like the best. I tend to like this method the best because it is relatively easy to find the magnitude and the, the phase angle when there's a capacitor. Here, again, convert to ma magnitude and phase angle. It's better to add these together in the real and imaginary part first, but once you have that, then it's really easy to simply multiply and divide the amplitudes and simply add and subtract the phase angles. And then, at the end, again, you want to convert back to the, imagine, the real and imaginary part so we can add the two together to get the final result. And that's how it's done.